Okay, so in this video, I'm going to go through the process of doing a firing microwave Reku style. So this is my classroom, and please excuse the mess. We've got like six different things going on right now, including paper pulp for sculptures. Um, and then this door right here goes straight out onto a patio. So this is where I'm setting up to do microwave Reku. I'm close my door a little bit so the smoke doesn't go right inside. I have an outdoor um, outlet here, so I can just roll out our clay bin and set the microwave on top to do firing here and then we have um, places where along the brick wall I can set things up to do uh, the Raku or um, I've just put a kiln shelf here on the table so first um, I take the spinning mechanism out of the microwave and then the glass plate out of the microwave you're left with that and then put some kiln posts on just to lift it up off of the floor of the microwave. I have um, the fusing paper, the kiln shelf paper that is in the kit here, but I also have some of the really, really thin paper and both of them work well. So there's a little foot on the bottom. I just kept the clay or the glaze off of the foot. Um, and that's two layers of smoky blue. You wanna make sure that you have your bowl right in the middle because you don't want it to touch the walls. So it should be centered like that. And then place your lid on, center that. And then I'm going to set that for 30 seconds. Um, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so they heat up really quickly. That was 30 seconds. It's not hot enough for me to need gloves yet, but probably should model that for your kids, just wearing them anyways. Uh, remove it for a second just to let any moisture in the clay out and then I'm closing this back up and then seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, so I've got the microwave now set for 10 minutes. That was most successful so far. Um, and I use this microwave. We moved into a house that just had one built in. So this was just our old kitchen one, but I have this at school and I have a not for food sign on it. We just use this up for warming up water for plaster or really any other purpose, um, for glass fusing, for uh, this now, just anything that I would need to heat up water for something in the art room. That's what we use this for. Um, when you're doing glass fusing or anything that's gonna have any kind of off putting of fumes, um, you don't want to also use the microwave for food later on um, because that's a no-no. So we have the other art teacher, her room is right next to mine. She has a microwave in her room too and so we use hers for food and this one for art related stuff. So I'm going to let this go. Um, if you hear a pop in the microwave, that's not a good thing. It's just like hearing a pop in the kiln. Um, that means that there was some moisture in there. So things to think about like you would normally think about this stuff too with just regular Raku. Um, not glazing and then immediately rushing to go put it in the kiln because you're gonna have moisture from the glaze that's soaked into the bisque so they need to sit these I glazed Friday and then they sat um, over the weekend so hopefully no issues uh, but it heats up way 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 faster than a normal kiln would um, so if there's going to be any moisture problems you're definitely going to have explosions so I'll be back in a minute when this is done firing okay so we've got it's been running for a little while we've got about two minutes left to go. Kind of hard to capture. A minute and 48 seconds. Um, so I'm going to see if I can see right at the top of the kiln there's a little um, vent hole and um, you can see that it's glowing. So the glaze has melted. It's up to a good temperature in there. If you have a pyrometer you could um, use the hole on the top to don't stick it down too far. You're going to stick it to the pot but or whatever's in there um, but you could test the temperature there I've just been kind of playing with the times um, I have a parameter I just haven't pulled it out so um, 10 minutes has been long enough as of right now to get it up to temp to get a nice smooth surface for the glaze and for me to get some cool colors so it's glowing if you were up to like eight nine minutes and it wasn't glowing then you would know that um, your microwave kiln is taking longer to get up to temp and that could be it could be the wattage of your microwave um, it could be lots of different things you might want to check your power settings on your microwave um, I've got mine on full power so check your wattage of the microwave you're using check your power settings on your microwave 
um, and see if you need to adjust things there. And if not, if you've got a microwave kiln that you've had for a while and used, um, or if it had any breakage in the insulating material, that could be why. It could be letting heat escape and it's not um, as efficient. So I'm going to pause again and then I'll be back when I take the kiln out. Okay, so the kiln is up to temperature. I've removed it with my gloves. And then everything else is basically like um, typical raku. So I'm going to take the lid off. Got my pot there. I'm going to pick up my pot with my tongs. Drop it in my reduction chamber. I'm gonna put a little bit more paper on top. Let that go for a second. And then top it with the lid. And you can see there's a little smoke. I forgot to grab my, um, my cloth um, from the classroom, but you can put a damp rag over the top of this to keep more of the smoke inside. Um, the more it burns that off, you'll get whatever color your clay is that you're using for Raku, it'll um, be stained by the carbon. And you can see too, while we let that go for a second, um, your, on the base of your, let me come around so I can see, the base of your shelf, the bottom of the microwave kiln, um, the pot has picked up a little bit of that uh, kiln paper there. And so sometimes um, it won't pick up as much and sometimes it will. It just depends on if you got glaze down there or not. Um, but if you have some left over that doesn't get disturbed, usually you can get two fire rings out of it. So this um, is still very, very hot. So I'll let that come out and just chill out until you know, if you're going to do another firing right afterwards until you can handle it or until it's cool enough to put it back inside um, on a whatever surface you're keeping your stuff on. And I'll be back after I have taken the piece out of the pot and rinsed it off. Okay, so we're back. This one's had time to sit and I've started um, another bowl in the kiln. So I'll keep pausing. I'm sorry if this is annoying. Um, and I'll show you the results of two. So this could probably sit a little bit longer, but I do need to teach classes today in a little while. So turned out pretty cool. I don't know if you can see that or not. So let me come around and get it focused. So not really in the sun here, but got some nice colors on that one. That one's pretty. It is still hot, and I need to go rinse it. Ooh, there's some really nice colors inside. That turned out nice. Cool, really pretty. So that's our first one today, and I'm gonna go rinse that off in the sink so we can see what all colors we have. I'll get some fresh paper for the reduction can for the second pot, and once I pull that one, I will show you that as well. Okay, so I just washed this one. This was the Amico Raku um, Smoky Blue Glaze. I had to bring it back so I could show you. Raku so fun. Look at the pretty colors I got in that. Some green, blue, copper. Really pretty. Get it in focus. That one turned out really nice. Real happy that I was recording that one. All right, so I'll be back in a minute with the next bowl. Okay, we're back. Last pot. So, removing the lid. in the 
can with a little bit of difficulty. A little bit more paper on top. Smother the can and lid on top. And then once that has sat long enough, I'll show you what that one turned out to look like. Okay, so I just washed the last one. Turned out really pretty. This one, I think, is, yeah, this one's Lustrous Cropper Amico. Um, it's kind of hard to tell on the camera, but there's lots of, there's some blues and coppers in this one. This one's a nice glaze. So... I wanted to make little tests for each of the glaze options that the kids have. That was the goal. I haven't done copper patina. That's the next on deck um, for that glaze. And then that's the one I just showed you guys, the lustrous, lustrous copper. And then Caribbean blue. Smoky blue. They have a little more color in them than I'm than I can see on the camera. It's kind of bright out here, so. And then this one is not traditional Raku glaze, but um, and I think I really think this is the one I did eight and a half to, uh, minutes. And if I would have done it ten, I think I could have gotten some more dynamic color. And there's a little bit of pitting, um, and a pinhole or two on the side. So I think I probably could have got that to melt. So I'll probably try another one of that one at ten minutes. But anyways. I am not a professional at this at all. I'm just playing around and trying to do some cool stuff with my students. So there's a video for that. And if you have questions, let me know. And I'm happy to share. Highly recommend you to do some research on your own and check out that Captain Mike um, YouTube channel uh, because he just has a wealth of knowledge and is a super kind guy and willing to talk and share. So anyways, hope you guys all have a good rest of your school year. Bye.